case number one. Uh, this is the snapshot of it, and uh, I will quickly finish it, sir. Another uh, twenty minutes, one one minute per slide. So this is the whole slide scanning. If you go to the low, my thing for uh, PG is when you go to the exam, don't see put the slide directly under the microscope. See it grossly. This is the appearance. You look on the slide. Then you can appreciate something. There is some papillary pattern going on. Some lobular pattern is there. Some other uh, pattern is there with adipose tissue. These are all adipose tissue. This is the margin. The margin is negative. Okay. So so many information you can get by looking at the cells. Uh, the slide with the gross eye. <coughs> then go to high power. Bhavani, is the slides all right, Bhavani? Are you all able to see it? Yes, sir. Just yes, sir. We can able to see, sir. It's clear to me, sir. One or, one or two seconds for... Uh, yes. yes. You sir, see dense sclerosis. Yeah, you see the glands and you see two types of cells. Luminal epithelial cells and abluminal cells with the clear cytoplasm. Okay. So, this is the highest power where you can see nicely the luminal cells and abluminal cells. Some of the abdominal cells, they are totally vacillated. They look like uh, empty spaces. Okay? And this is one pattern. And when you go to this, some of the slides are very dark. Bhavani, I think you have to mute yourself, Bhavani. If somebody is uh, keeping the mic uh, unmuted. Somebody is this thing, sir. I'll ask them to unmute, sir. Yeah. Super. So some of these slides are very old. Okay, they are older than you. This is from 1990s uh, from my collection. I restrained them. That's why they are looking slightly darker. Sorry about the quality. But you see the same type of cells, two types of cells in a papillary pattern. Okay, see the papillary pattern. And if you go to the highest power, you can see the luminal cells and the abluminal cells. Okay. So when you two see two types of cells, the diagnosis is, uh, is my presentation. Just one minute. Ah, when you see it, it is adenomyopithelioma, papillary and lobular pattern. Okay. So case number two looks like this. Let me go to case number two. Again, it's a well circumscribed lesion in the gross eyeing, okay, circumscribed lesion, but look cellular, some sclerosis is happening there. Is this case number two? I don't think so, sorry, it's case number 11. That's why I was worrying. Just one minute. Yeah, this is the case number two. taking some time yes okay so this is the grass appearance and it tells you there are two pieces you have to look both the pieces the ink is there lesion is touching the ink and it is quite cellular so proliferative lesion and when you go to the high power again you see the sclerosis and you see the luminal cells and the abluminal cells okay so this is also another uh, adenomyopithelioma and uh, what type is it? That's the question you have to remember. It's adenomyopithelioma, tubular type, okay? So adenomyopithelioma, now it's a spectrum. Adenomyopithelioma, atypical adenomyopithelioma, and malignant adenomyopithelioma. And there are five patterns in adenomyopithelioma. It's a bicellular epithelial and myopithelial tumor. <clears throat> it will have tubular, lobular, papillary, spindle cell, and adenosis pattern. Two things you have to remember number one mitosis when the mitosis is less than three it is benign three to ten it is malignant more than ten is uh, sorry atypical more than ten is malignant and when it is invasive it is malignant so from this table you have to remember these two points and the adenomyopithelioma is again spectrum benign atypical and malignant super you will go to case number three I can ask uh, either uh, one of the, uh, when we are waiting, if you, if any one of you have seen, you can type in what is your, I already given the diagnosis, but uh, you can 
type in what you feel about this case number three well circumscribed lesion epithelioid cells and the spindle cells there is str no stroma behind okay whenever you don't see stroma behind the tumor cells think of stromal tumor okay so here they in the high power they look like epithelioid cells okay <clears throat> Can it be carcinoma or epithelioid uh, stromal tumors? If it is carcinoma, <coughs> you should be having some uh, background uh, stroma. Here, there no background stroma. So, I will go for uh, epithelioid stromal tumors. Okay. So, this is the picture and this is myofibroblastoma epithelioid type. That brings out to approach a spindle cell tumor. Any spindle cell tumor in the breast, you have to see whether it is a monophasic, just I will hide, Mono, monophasic or biphasic, okay? If it is biphasic, we have to think of whether it is inflammatory, low grade or high grade, no inflammatory or reactive condition in biphasic, okay? Biphasic means spindle cell, epithelial and uh, stromal cell. Low grade, it can be hamartoma, adenomyopithelioma, uh, PASH, which is nothing but uh, pseudoangiometer stromal hyperplasia, fibroadenoma, and phyllite tumor, low grade. High grade is phyllite tumor, high grade. And here comes the metaplastic carcinoma. Okay? Sometimes it may show epithelial cells and spindle cells, but usually it is of a high grade. Okay? So it is spindle cell, metaplastic carcinoma, biphasic. And when you see monophasic, it can be inflammatory or reactive condition like desmoid fibromatosis, nodular fasciitis, or fibrous scar. In the low grade, it is myofibroblastoma, neural tumors, or lipomatous tumors. In the high grade, again, monophasic spindle cell or metaplastic carcinoma, or sarcoma or METS from the some other organ. Okay, take a snap of this. This is the thing you have to remember how to approach a spindle cell lesion in the breast. And in myofibroblastoma, there are eight types and um, they will be positive for desmin, CD34, ERPR and antigen receptor. Super. Now we are going to case number four. Uh, I will show you the picture one slide in the uh, keynote. This is how it looked. Okay. So you can see some skin ulceration. We will go to the real slide. So, so you can see the epidermis here, lot of ulceration, okay? And whenever you see ulceration, go to high power. Near the ulceration, you see the individual cells and clusters of cells, okay? So these are pseudopilocytes or collagenated cells, whereas these are the paget cells, okay? So this is a paget disease of the nipple. And when you see pagets, you have to go through whether uh, to rule out or uh, rule in DCIS, okay? So here you can see some DCIS here, this part, okay? Some DCIS here. Yes, high grade DCIS, okay? So pagets with a DCIS is the diagnosis. Pagets disease with a DCIS. In case number five, again, another exuberant pages because of time uh, constraint, I'm not going to hold slide. You can see the page itself and uh, DCIS in this area. And <clears throat> when you see pages disease, you take a snap of this. So you have to differentiate with the squamous carcinoma in situ, melanoma in situ, and toker cells. Page cells are positive for CK7 and HER2 new. Squamous cells are positive for P40. Melanoma positive for SOX10, that's the new marker. We used to do HMB45 as on melan A, but SOX10 is more sensitive and specific. Toker cells are positive only for CK7 and negative for HER2. That's why how you differentiate pagets. And there is another beautiful thing known as eyeliner sign. Okay. The eyeliner sign means the basal cells, basal cells. Okay. The basal cells, whether they are preserved, thicker thing. In Bowen's disease, and in uh, um, um, uh, predominantly in Bowen's disease, the basal cells are preserved. The squamous cell carcinoma in say to the basal cells are preserved. It's like uh, most of the pathologies are females, isn't it? You use your eyeliner to line the lower eyelid, okay, lower portion. 
and that sign is preserved in squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Whereas in Paget cells, the tie liner is not preserved. Individual cells will be seen in the basal cells. Case number six, um, again, it's uh, like cellular lesions here. If you go to real slide, I love to go to real slides rather than PowerPoint slides. I'm sorry, I'm taking some time, but uh, the, in this way, it's more like a real life. It's, uh, you are like signing out with me. A lot of necrosis, okay? And whenever you see necrosis, you go to the high power, look at the lining epithelium, okay? These are high-grade uh, malignant cells. So this is nothing but uh, DCIS uh, clinging type, okay? So the next case, again, uh, some DCIS, we go, go to the real slide. Some fibrocystic changes, something wrong in these areas. So go to the high power. I don't like them. Nuclear pleomorphism is there. And abundant cytoplasm, they are more apocrine -ish, okay? And I told you rule of three, look at the smallest nuclei and look at the largest nuclei, more than three times enlargement, okay? So this is apocrine meta DCIS, apocrine DCIS. I already showed you DCIS is classified into uh, architecture and cell type, okay? Why my thing is coming on? Are, are you all seeing this uh, thing hiding the screen? The, ah, it's gone now. So that is apocrine DCIS. Case number eight, it again shows very cellular uh, areas with a lot of lymphocytes. So, and whenever you see lymphocytes, you lymphocytes are like our policemen. Whenever something wrong, they will come. We will go to the real slide and pay more attention to those areas. Okay, see the lymphoid rich, and this is definitely comedonecrosis, okay? So this is a DCIS comedotype. You can see it in the high power very nicely. And why, what is happening here? Here you can see the uh, small nests of tumor cells, okay? So this is uh, less than one millimeter. And you can see a normal breast lobule there, DCIS, DCIS, DCIS. But only in this focus, the lymphocytes are very high in number. If you do cytokeratin, you can pick up some of the epithelial cells, but they are, please believe me, they are less than one millimeter. So they are nothing but uh, microinvasive carcinoma. Okay. So case number nine, the history in the breast, it's all breast lesions. Okay. No, nothing very specific. <clears throat> Hypercellular, infiltrative, some normal breast tissue is seen here, okay? So first we will see the cancer area in high power. You can see the highly malignant cells, okay? And uh, infiltrating uh, breast carcinoma, NST. This looks uh, old ductal type. Then come to the periphery, I want to show you something. See the lobules, okay? See these lobules. And you can see the cancer cells in the lobules. So this is nothing but infiltrating breast carcinoma NST with the cancerization of the lobules. So that's the diagnosis for that case, case number nine. And case number 10. What is there in case number 10 in the PowerPoint? Um, it is a dense lesion, some vacuolated lesions, okay? See the foreign body giant cell reaction. And here you can see, sorry, it's folded, but you can see the fat necrosis and some vacuolated uh, areas there with the foreign body giant cell reaction, and this is cancer, okay? This is just for interest I showed you. This patient had a silicon implant, and that silicon implant has ruptured and it has produced a silicon reaction. And in addition to that, the patient developed an infiltrating ductal type of uh, breast cancer, okay? So this is uh, silicon with uh, carcinoma, but whenever, uh, luckily we don't have this many cases in India, 
But whenever uh, in the exam, if they ask you or Western countries, you have to remember anaplastic large cell lymphoma associated with the uh, silicon uh, implants. Oh, sorry. So this is nothing but reaction to silicon with the infiltrating mammary cells. Case number 11, uh, it's uh, looking infiltrating in the periphery, which is showing a lot of, uh, we will see this. And this is nothing but cancer, mainly arranged in tubules and as cribriform pattern, okay? So this is the invasive mammary carcinoma, tubular and the cribriform pattern. 